Good morning to our brothers and sisters. Uh, today is a Thursday, another day. I just want to take you guys through NPP's 2016 uh, campaign manifesto. And then let, let us look at what they are doing in 2023. It is very pathetic. So these people were able to come out with all these campaign promises. And they have not been able to fulfill them. So we're just going to look at them to 2016 NPP campaign manifesto. And here I have opened it up on my laptop. Uh, so I'll be reading it from my laptop here. And it's very interesting, you know. It said, highlight, change an agenda for jobs, creating prosperity and equal opportunity for all. Okay, it said, the new patriotic party manifesto for election 2016 so they were able to come up with this manifesto and this is just the synopsis of that and it's about at 68 pages okay so we're going through and you can also google it out uh, the highlight of the npp 2016 manifesto i just want you to read and i can tell you these people are jokes they are completed jokes and any serious nation, they will be rotten in jail. Eh? But they are not. So we're just going through. Let's look at something here. You say this is the man, oh, the current president. And they put out a very nice picture of him <laughs> on the internet. He said, that is, he said, look at this. My vision for Ghana. And he said this in 2016. He said, our nation is in crisis. A crisis created and sustained by the mismanagement, incompetence, and corruption of the Muhammad-led National Democratic Congress and D.C. government. Economic conditions are worsening by the day and there is so much suffering in the land. But Ghana does not have to be like this. Ghana deserves the best. I have dedicated my life to public service to change Ghana for good. As president, with the help of the almighty god look at nonsense with the almighty god yeah this is what they usually use to deceive Ghanaians. with the help of the almighty god i will be committed to a different kind of government uh, yes and today they are witnessing one that governs in the national interest not for private gain <laughs> this man is just a chameleon you know he said all this to deceive Ghanaians. He said, as I travel the country over the years, I see the pains and um, sacrifices made by the ordinary Ghanaians every day. Eh? By the farmer who struggles to feed his family and send his uh, children to school, but does not know whether having made the sacrifice to pay the bills, his children will even be able to get a job at the end of their studies. So this man said this in 2016. So by the mothers of the sick child who has to walk miles on the uh, dusty road eh, to the clinic to get medicines only to be turned away because the clinic will not accept the uh, uh, her national health insurance scheme card and she has no money to pay. Okay, let's read the, uh, the other one. He said, by the young uh, man and woman and what kind of English is this? Okay, true, though, true, no fault of their own, have had to drop out of school and cannot find a way out of life difficulties. But a young man who, because of financial circumstances at home, never had the opportunity to go to school and is now sleeping rough on the street. So you can read this, but I have to skip this. And this is what this man put it out there. And today, he won't be able to say the same thing. Okay? He, he said this to gain power from the people. It was the Ghanaians who gave him the power. And today, if you question this man, and they have criminal people out there. So this is just the synopsis I, I'm going through. So you can read. It said, the contents includes a strong 
for uh, economic matters, trade and industry, energy and petroleum, agriculture and rural development, growing together, infrastructure, natural resources, land, forestry and mining, science, technology and innovation and environment, education, health, social development, governance, corruption and public. So you can read through this. But I have to skip. Eh? Uh, we have to, you know, uh, I am taking you to this page. It is very interesting. These people are just criminals. They are just criminals, I swear to God. So I am starting from here. Okay. They said corruption on the welfare of Ghanaians. And this was said in 2016. It said for the vast majority of Ghanaians, the toxic mixture of the Mahama government's mismanagement, incompetence, and corruption over the last eight years has resulted in an explosion of suffering in the country. So who are those suffering? And then they highlighted those who are suffering. Teachers are suffering. Eh? Uh, teacher trainees are suffering. Nurses are suffering. Uh, patients are suffering. Students are suffering. Traders are suffering. Pensioners are suffering. Okay. Drivers are suffering. Contractors are suffering. Civil servants are suffering. Farmers are suffering. Fishermen are suffering. Industries are suffering. Eh? It says uh, uh, um, artisans eh, are suffering. Carriers, so uh, the carriers are all industries. Look at this. Carrier people are industries. Carriers are suffering. Men are suffering. Women are suffering. Children are soft crying. Is that children are crying? <laughs> so children crying to are uh, all um, as a result of the economic problems. Okay, and this was in 2016. Is it for election 2016? Okay, let's go here. You can read through. Okay, they said the economic policy. The NPP economic policy is set here with the NPP vision for Ghana. Our overall vision for Ghana is the development of the optimistic, self-confident, and prosperous nation taught uh, through the creative exploitation of our human and natural resources, creating within domestic, uh, um, democratic, open, and fair society in which mutual trust and economic opportunities exist for all. And so, so you can read through this. Uh, let's read here. Is that the NPP policy direction to achieve our objective? Our principal economic policies direction will be to, eh, will be to, <laughs> eh, is that restore macroeconomic stability? And these are all, you know, book jargons. <laughs> they don't even know how to realize this. This is just a book jargon. Macroeconomic stability is just a book jargon. They don't even understand what it means by macroeconomic stability. And it says shift the focus of economic uh, management from taxation to production. So instead of taxing citizens, they will not tax citizens. They're going to, you know, um, do production and manage the economy, um, economic competent, um, competently and uh, make machinery uh, of government work deliver the benefit of uh, uh, progress to Ghanaians. Uh, okay, let's go here. Uh, and the, uh, the explaining. Okay, here. Uh, they said, to address the challenges facing Ghana in 2016 with the economic mismanagement, that the then uh, Mahama, John Damani Mahama and his NPP and NDC people uh, brought to Ghanaians. It said to address the challenges, the NPP will shift the focus of economic policy away from the taxation to production by reducing the corporate tax rate from 25% to 20%. Uh, okay, and what have they done? It said removing import duties <laughs> on raw materials and machineries, eh? machinery for production within the context of the ECOWAS and uh, common external tariff. And this is the nonsense that they put it out there and they are doing the opposite. Okay. That is that it was just for a vote and they are doing opposite. Is that abolishing special import duty? That is a lie. 
and he said abolishing special import duty they put all this there just to entice Ghanaians to vote for them in 2016 and that is a lie they are doing the opposite Akufuado has rather introduced over 20 something different taxes uh, 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 taxes at Tema Port. He said abolishing the 17% VAT on the important machines not produced in the country. This man is a criminal and deserves to be uh, to serve uh, his the, for the, uh, his life in prison. He said abolishing 17% of VAT on imported machines not produced in the country. This man is a criminal. So if you are Ghanaian and you are reading this, if you are a Ghanaian, eh, uh, you are a Ghanaian and you are reading this, does this make sense to you? That the man who in 2016 told Ghanaians that he would abolish a 17% VAT on imported machine is rather doing the opposite. Look at here. Abolishing the 17 percent vat on financial services this man is a, a you know a criminal a mafia and deserve to go to prison and you guys are not asking them this is what they promise you and look at what they are delivering they promise you this i didn't write this you they wrote it and i'm reading this from the npp 2016 campaign promise they said abolishing 17.5 vat on financial services and here is that abolishing five percent vat on real estate sales <laughs> the man is a criminal criminal man who wanted to become president at all cost eh? wrote all this nonsense eh? abolish the 17 percent vat on domestic airline ticket and this man was rather taking 150 dollars from Ghanaians in diaspora and he has rather increased tax on the airline ticket. The man is a criminal man, I swear to God. Reducing VAT for macro and small enterprises from the current 17.5% to 3% flat rate VAT introduced by Kofuo led government. That is a criminal government right there. <laughs> and we are reading, this is what they promised you guys, you. He said, introducing tax credit. He said, introducing tax credit. Already, now coupon. Introducing tax credit and other incentives for businesses that hire young graduates from tertiary institutions and reviving, uh, reviewing withholding taxes imposed on various. And you know what? <clears throat> they copied all this thing from the foreign nations, you, and they don't even know how to implement it. All this nonsense that they put it out here, <clears throat> it didn't come from them. Oh. It was uh, somebody, it's, uh, another nation's um, you know, manifesto that they copied. Eh? That is why they are delivering hell to you guys eh? to ensure increase in production and blah, blah, blah. Look at all this. And they did the opposite. So you can read through here. You can read through um, the 2016 eh? NPP 2016 manifesto. And this is another one here. Eh? This is another one here. They said one district, one factory, and collaboration with the private sector. And the NPP will implement one district, one factory initiative. The this this district industrial this uh, district industrialization programs. <laughs> Do you know what it means by industrialization? It said the district industrialization program will ensure eh, will uh, ensure an even spatial spread of industries, criminals. It says strategies anchor initiative. Government will partner with private and local and eh, foreign. These are all English language. Eh? They don't even know what they mean by this. Establishing industries, development of uh, development funds (IDF) to finance critical private sector industrial initiative. The fund will be seeded and fed by the um, uh, funding from government. A multilateral and private institutional investors. And that is a lie. Reorient energy tariff policy to reduce the burden on business. Do they even know? Do they really understand to reorient an energy tar energy tariff? Look at the the the, 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 the taxes on uh, energy. Uh, what is it on energy? They've increased. Eh? 
electricity price. They've increased everything in that country. So far, he has increased electricity price by more than 1,000%. And look at what they promised you guys. And they are delivering the opposite. He said, launch a comprehensive national plan for entrepreneurship and innovation that will invest in supporting young businesses and startups. Okay? That, is, that was a lot. And look at this. Develop a cooperation with trade unions. A database for trained apprentices, apprentices and artisans, and establish a national apprentice recruiting agency. <laughs> uh, these people, uh, they are creeping at you. It's a uh, creating and information information portal and set up a task force to assist our youth and artisans in making their product and services visible on the local national and global scale <laughs> that is just an english language okay we are reading through all the nonsense they promised we got here here yeah, there's another one here he said um he said um through the concerted collaborative and collective effort the npp will enforce local content Provisions by developing efficient and competent and competitive uh, competitive <laughs> competitive local supplier and eh, networks for the goods and services that industries needs that can uh, realistically be sourced locally. To facilitate this, the NPP will develop a national industrial sub <laughs> a national industrial sub contracting agent to link SMEs with large scale enterprises <laughs> uh, this, uh, these people uh, these people are just criminals i swear to god criminal people eh? and look at here and they said the key initiatives oh this my phone is uh, the blur is too much is it a key initiative will will initiate with to initiate and implement and the following is that establishing an industrial development fund to finance critical private sector industrial initiative the fund will be seeded and funded by government okay okay i have read, already read this and let me continue let me let me go to the other page it said the procurement was a in addition the npp would introduce a policy requiring that 30% of the required 17% be secured from entities owned by women, persons with disability, <laughs> and those eh, established under the Youth Enterprise Fund. Uh, these people are just criminals, I swear to God. And look at what they put it out there. Today, they've eventually collapsed everything. They have collapsed everything. And that is what you can read. It's a power sector. <laughs> and by the way, he hasn't introduced anything in Ghana with regard to power. He has not added a single gigabyte of el energy to Ghana electrical grid. Ghana el uh, electricity, he has not added a single, a single uh, uh, gigabyte to anything. And, and you can read, the NDC inherited an economy with no doom, so he's a liar. In 2019, because he, he's 2009, he they are just lying. However, the energy sector has seen been badly managed. The poor management, blah blah blah, and they are the serious economic managers. So you can read through all this nonsense here, and you see all that they promised Ghanaians eh, are all lies, and they have not fulfilled all these campaign promises. And today they are delivering hell. Talking about. Pensioners suffering today are the pensioners. I hope they are enjoying the teachers. Are you guys enjoying? Is that petroleum revenue? And this is we should pay attention here. Review and further amend the Petroleum Revenue Management Act 2011 and to support investment of revenue from oil in high impact strategic social and economic infrastructure. He said between 2017 and 2020, uh, a preliminary uh, allocate revenue from oil to infrastructure. <laughs> he said from 2020, and they were speaking during 2016, they said in, from 2017 to 2020, they will allocate revenue in the oil revenue to uh, infrastructure, health, education, and agriculture. That is it, you know. You see, the oil is not giving us anything, it is rather a curse on Ghanaians. 
leverage oil eh, to complete the Accra Kumasi Paga railway line. Do they even have that kind of a railway line in Ghana? Accra Kumasi Paga railway line. And that is an insult to Ghanaians. <laughs> is there a connection with the rehabilitation of Western and Eastern railway lines? Is that manage and use the revenue from the Jubilee? The ju uh, Jubilee, that is the oil for as well as from the San the, the Ten and Sankofa field in a responsible and transparent manner. <laughs> uh, today, they are very transparent when it comes to the oil. And look at what they, they just put it there to deceive the Ghanaians. And say, this is agriculture, right? Provide a mechanism to capture the water released by the annual spillage of the Bagri Dam in Burkina Faso uh, to use the, for irrigation in the north. <laughs> we will also begin immediate discussions with the government of Burkina Faso for a more controlled spillage of the dam to prevent the flooding. Hey, that is a lie. That is a criminal government that lied to Ghanaians because they wanted to be in power at all costs. They said, facilitate the provision of community-owned and managed small-scale irrigation facilities across the country. <laughs> facilitate the provision of community owned and managed the small scale irrigation facilities across the country, especially in the northern Ghana, through the policy of one village, one dam. And that is just English jargon right there. Uh, okay, to work with, work to achieve the United Nations recommended ratio, ratio of one extension officer and to 5,000 fa to 500 farmers with an emphasis on recruiting female extension officers. And that is a big lie. Today, they are not <laughs> employing anybody. That is a big lie. That is a big fat lie. Is that revamp existing me uh, mechanization centers and support the private sector to establish, manage, and provide affordable mechanization service to farmers. And <laughs> that is a lie. Is that, look at here. And properly implement block farming devoid of uh, cronism and political interference that have turned the NDC implementation of this largely <laughs> largely proven farming techniques into complete failure. And today they can't even they are importing even Gary into Ghana. Today they import Gary, they import chicken, they import everything into Ghana. Is a pay special attention to selected products for accelerated development, including greens, fruit, vegetables, tubers, oil, oil palm, cotton, shea, cashew, cocoa, um, horticulture, livestock, fisheries, and poultry. The, the livestock, the, um, the NPP will help organize producers of these crops into producers, association, and pursue a value add addition to these products as the core strategy of uh, agro processing and agro agri business development plan to help promote them. That is a fat big lie. And they haven't been able to achieve nothing and they've not done so. And so you can read through, I'm just uh, uh, picking them. That's what it is. This this was, that was agriculture. And said like growing together. <laughs> yeah, growing together. And that was a lie, you see. It's a growing together consists of seven major economic initiatives designed to take giant leaps in transforming Ghana holistically with particularly emphasis on rural and deprived communities in a major effort at inclusive development at all parts of the country by adopting a localized development approach. He said by de developing the local development approach and he said the, it includes the following. Is that the Infrastructure for Poverty Eradication Program, the IPEP, the IPEP, under the IPEP, every constituency in the country will be allocated the um, equivalent of $1 million annually to finance the capital expenditure on the upgrading and improving the infrastructure and or on developing the new facilities, especially in rural and Deprived community, that is a, a big lie. Criminal people, the president, which will ensure accountability in their operations, and they haven't been able to do so. That is a big lie. 
Eh? So that, that was what they put out there in 2016 to entice Ghanaians for to is said uh, my there was something wrong wrong. Is that the infrastructuring eh? that is that the restructuring of the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority, SADA, to the original design of the mandate of the Northern Development Authority, NDA, which will cover northern, upper east, upper west, and western um, rich and the west rich, upper west region of the major programs of the NDA will be out uh, to oversee the implementation of one village, one dam policy. That is a big fat lie. What has happened to my video? These Facebook people, uh, uh, they keep uh, uh, meddling with my, my page. As I said, the establishment of the Middle Bed Developmental Development Authority, which will be responsible for the Northern Volta and the proposed Western North Region, Ashanti Region, Eastern Region, and the Brun Ahafo Region. And uh, the MBA will administer IPAP in those areas. <laughs> that is a fat, big lie. That was a deception. Uh, um, that was a deception. This is what it is. Look at this one here. The establishment of Zongo Development Fund to invest in. <laughs> Zongo people, where are you guys? Come here. Uh, the establishment of Zongo for the education and training within Zongos. <laughs> Improving infrastructures the infrastructure in the Zongo targeting health and sanitation. That was a, and they don't even know how to go about all this. This is just grammar. Putting all this just grammar, and they don't even know how to go about it. He said, supporting local businesses and centers of culture and art and community policing and security. And that was a big lie. And the creation of new Western North administrative region in order to open it up for accelerated. So those of you coming from Western North. Abusia, me These people are just criminal. I said, uh, the creation of, uh, I said, um, I said, the creation of new Western North administration, blah, blah, blah. I said, the restructuring of, the restructuring of the royalty sharing ratio within the mining communities to increase eh, to increase the share of revenue that mining companies currently receive in royalty payment to 20% from the current 10%. <laughs> it is a lie. <laughs> These people are just criminals. I swear to God. Look at what they put it out there. Like as if this nonsense is in Ghana. They just went to the internet, then copied a machine from foreign countries, just put it on their page. So they just put this there to deceive you Ghanaians. A lot of Ghanaians, they just deceive them. He said, when it comes to infrastructure, hey, look at this. He said, infrastructure, infrastructure development. Uh, this, it should be infrastructure development. This, I don't even know who wrote all this nonsense. And they don't even have people, they don't have competent people who will be, who are able to write good English for them. It's a infrastructure development and the infrastructure development. Under the Mahama led administration, eh, has been characterized by massive corruption through the contract overpricing, opaque <laughs> and shady contract processing, and gross abuse of the sole uh, sourcing provision of the public procurement and eh, act 2003. Eh, it says, and however, the cost of building the new uh, sister bed teaching hospital. He said, however, the cost, the, however, the cost of building the new 600 bed teaching hospital eh, by the University of Ghana. So they acknowledge that Mahama really built that. This was 2016. And they captured this in their 2016. 
He said, however, the cost of building the new 600 bed and teaching hospital by the University of Ghana is 30 million less than the cost of renovating and expanding uh, the rich hospital from 200 beds to 400. So look at the nonsense that they put. It was not even making sense you. So Mahama built a hospital at the University of Ghana at the cost of 30 million. And today, Akufuado is building one building at the cost of 500 million dollars at the expense of taxpayers. And taxpayers' money is that he has a vision and he promised God and that he was going to build a cathedral. And he's building one building at a cost of 500 million. And somebody built 600, eh? Um, is that 600 beds, eh? 600 bed teaching hospital by the University of Ghana at eh? 30 million. And they are talking nonsense about it. He said, these are just few examples. Okay. few examples of the corrupt nature of the infrastructure development under the Mahama-led NDC government. Indeed, given the resources as it is uh, at its disposal, the nation should have received at least four to five times the quantum of investment that the NDC claims to have undertaken in terms of infrastructure and development. Under the Integrated Infrastructure Development Program, IIDP, the NPP will take measures to curb the massive corruption in the infrastructure development sector. And so Mahama was really doing better in the infrastructure. And today they are doing nothing in infra infrastructure. These idiots are not doing anything in infrastructure. The money is not even there. So they were they actually saw that Mahama was doing something in infrastructure. And they said Mahama inf infl inflated a lot of figures. About, and that was a lie. Oh. Because they wanted to come to into power at all costs. Because Akufuado wanted to uh, wanted to fulfill wants to fulfill his childhood fantasy. That was why they put all this nonsense out there. They said Ghana received value for money on all such projects. The key component of our IDP are they said this is what they would do. With regard to infrastructure corruption, the NPP in 2016 suggested that the national asset protection, what is national asset? What are they even protecting? Development of interconnected roads, railways, ports, and harbors. Hey, today, Akufuado has collapsed all of them. Development of our uh, of aviation <laughs> and aviation hubs for international, and he hasn't added a single a terminal. To the existing terminals, eh? the Kotoka International Airport, he has not added anything. Eh? Okay, he has he has not a water for all program to ensure every Ghanaian has access to potable water. And today, Akufuado has destroyed all Ghana uh, river systems because Akufuado brought Chinese people to Ghana, and they 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 have used Galamse. To destroy river system today Ghanaians have a lot of kidney and cancers they have liver diseases that's what Kufado has done food control interventions which food control interventions today Ghanaians can't even eat a eh, three square a meal in a day and in a day they can't they can't they can't get the uh, money to uh, uh, buy food they don't have food to eat he said uh, mainstreaming RCT in governance and it is a lie Quality, affordable housing for all strategies. <laughs> so you can read all this nonsense that these people put out there. Right? There are many. And we can't read all of them. And we can't read all of them. So let's um, go to another um, category. That category is uh, natural resources, land, and forestry. Eh? I said, uh, the country is richly endowed with natural resources, like fertile lands, lakes, rivers, forests, wildlife, fish, and, min uh, and uh, minerals, which are vital for development. The NPP on the policy on forest, uh, forestry uh, resources will seek to rehabilitate degraded forests. It is, a, it is false. Akufuadu using national security officers at um, our forest reserves doing illegal mining. That is what he's doing in 2013. And, he, and since they've been in power, they've been using the national security, the police and the military people 
and to mine um, gold, illegal uh, mining in all the uh, reserves in Ghana. That's what they are doing. He said, we will target annual 30,000 hectares eh, for degraded areas within the outside forest reserve for rehabilitation, reforestation and plantation development. <laughs> Meaning that, uh, is, it, is it outside forest? So we have the reserve areas and non-reserve areas. So the, the outside forest, it means your community. So every year, they will target 30,000 hectares. And that is, not, that is a huge uh, land area. And that is a lie. And they, they, they haven't done so. It says, support the annual establishment of 1,000 hectares of bamboo. <laughs> it says, to support the annual establishment of 1,000 hectares of... So it means every year they will plant 1,000 hectares of bamboo. Uh, they will plant bamboo on 1,000 hectares every year. And rattan plantation and will encourage individuals and private sectors involvement through the provision of subsidized planting materials. That is a big lie. Support the enhancement of ecotourism it is a lie. It is a fat lie. Is that comprehensively protect our water catchment areas? <laughs> I hope they are doing that clean river programs. And uh, is it, please, are you guys having clean water to drink? There must be a clean water act. So here they have clean rivers programs. Clean rivers program comprehensively protect and he has not protect eh, a single river in that country Kufuado has rather degraded all river systems in the country eh, look at the nonsense they put out here he said commit to ensuring the turnaround time for land registration is reduced to 30 working days that is a fat fucking lie that is a lie he said ensuring that mineral revenues are efficiently managed for the benefit of Ghanaians. This is just a simple English language, you. Putting this nonsense there, it's just a simple English language, you. Is that the NPP will enact, will enact a consolidated mineral revenue management law, similar to the Petroleum Revenue Management Act 2011, Act 815, to guide the use of mineral revenues in strategic sectors of our economy. He said, reconstruct the small-scale mining industry so that its activities can take place within the guidelines set up under the appropriate group. You see, all these are nonsense, you see. Just nonsense. They, they, they haven't been able to implement a sink, none of them. He said, look at here. Science, technology, innovation, environment. This is just dragons. He <laughs> says, science and technology contribute less than 1% of Ghana's GDP compared to the average 2.5% of the rest of Africa. It is the NPP's intention to achieve at least 1.5% uh, over the next four years. They, they are not even saying that 20% to just 1.5%. You see, these people, visionless people, they don't even have vision. They said we will establish a... Eh, we will establish an uh, advisory council for science and technology as an advisory group to directly advise the president on all matters. A disease pop up in 2019, uh, 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 2020, and Akufu did not call any scientific people. He called pastors. Look at the nonsense he put you. He said, uh, the advisors uh, will advise the president on all matters and policies regarding science, technology, and innovation. That is a lie. Uh, and who is going to advise the president? Those people, do they have knowledge in science? No. They have no idea about science. They say expand and, and expand and research. Expand and research. Uh, no, expand the research and development cap capabilities of the country through the establishment of regional technological Technology pass. Look at this. Regional technology uh, in regional technology parks. And do we have regional technology parks? No. In collaboration with the private sector and international financial institutions, establish a flagship systems of Ghana centers of excellence across the country that not to us are all higher education institutions. This is all nonsense. 
Just nonsense. Please, just nonsense. I don't want to hear this. And say, look at this here. They said, uh, in collaboration with the private sector and international factor established, okay, I've read this. They said, they put this out here. Bi biomedical engineering, pharmaceutical technology and uh, bioequivalence research, crop improvement and seed technology, all these lies. Improve environment and sanitation. All that today you guys are living in shit. I said energy engineering, <laughs> manufacture equipment. Said, yeah, you know, you know what they do? They just go to the internet and just copy things, just copy you know terms and statements, just put it out there and tell you that this is what they do. This is what they will do. That is why you guys are suffering. He said food processing engineering, building technology and electronics and electronic assembly manufacturing equipment engineering energy engineering <laughs> ah you guys uh, at least eh, three gces will be established by the end of 2020 support the national policy of achieving 60 eh, to 40 student ratio eh, for the sciences and compared to the humanities by massa all these people just criminal people and look at this they put there so that time they were able to you know, capture this and this is somebody's livelihood and they put this out there eh, in 2016 to deceive Ghanaians. and let's look at another one here they said we aim to shift in eh, structure and content of our education system from merely passing examination to building character and nurturing values and raising literate confident and engaging citizens who can think critically look engaged citizens who can think do do have for them do they even think critical? do they even understand the meaning of thinking critically look at this nonsense that they put out though that the npp <clears throat> will create a, a consultative council of researchers <laughs> uh, the npp will create a consultative council of researchers the association of ghana industries ghana chamber of commerce representative of major banks and eh, major banks he came and collapsed banks and venture capital funds today he has more he has mortgage venture capital fund because of IMUF deal for sources for funding to take research funding from laboratory to marketplace that is a fat big lie he said establish a manufacturing plant at the Kwame Nkrumah University how do you establish a manufacturing plant at the university uh, we how <coughs> establish a manufacturing plant at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology for the production of prototype <laughs> prototype of the inventions and creation of scientists and innovators in the country. You see, these stupid people, they went to the internet and copied all this and put it there as a manifesto. These foolish people, they went to the internet, copied all this from the internet, and they put it out there as a manifesto. He said, establish a manufacturing plant. A ma what sort of manufacturing? Is it food processing plant? Is it a metal plant? Is it a, 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 a what is it? A, um, um, a, 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 what kind of plant? Is it establish a manufacturing plant at, at KNUST eh, for the production of prototypes? Do they even understand the term prototype? Your president and Mahmoud Ibamia, they don't understand this term prototypes eh? of the inventions and creations of scientists and innovators in the country. The plant will, will build prototypes. These foolish people, they deserve to go to prison, I swear to God. They said, reintegrate physical education and recreation into mainstream education. That is just, just a statement. They don't even know what they were talking about. He said, ensure that kindergarten places are, are available for all four-year-old children for the country. Today, children are sitting under mango trees. Sitting, are six, sitting under trees. Eh? Look at this nonsense here. And that is deception. He said, uh, re redlining basic education to include senior high school covering, um, let's see here. Is that covering vocational, agriculture, and technical schools and make it available for free on universal basic to this? 
build an effective partnership so you can read all this you eh? these criminal people i swear to god these people eh? these people this is what they did do collaborate with nat nagrat is that collaborate with nat nagrat and other teacher association to facilitate today these people are all they are on strike they go to strike all the time available housing scheme for teachers that is a lie teachers have they built a housing scheme for you guys and, and ensure that teachers who upgrade their qualification and skills are promoted promptly and that their salaries increase and take immediate effect <laughs> ensure proper decent to ultra ensure you you haven't said anything to ensure you have not said anything and how do you ensure is that to ensure proper decentralization of teachers recruitment and other um document processing activities today you have to pay bribe and uh, relieve teachers of their frustrating uh, frustration and uh, uh, bureaucratic processing of domain uh, documents of the centers eh? is that aggressive aggressively promote science technology engineering and mathematical stem education across all levels of education that is a fat big lie <laughs> aggressively and they use that term look at it, this aggressively you know you see desperate they, they were so desperate they said we shall put in place a program for the pop, uh, popularization and better teaching of the french language this is nonsense and very stupid we shall put in place a program for the popularization and better teaching of the French language in our schools. Very stupid. Very, very stupid. We cannot popularize our own local language, but we should popularize French language. That is very stupid. Foolish people, I swear to God. <clears throat> Look at this nonsense here. <sighs> Strengthen the participation of missions in the mission-funded schools. Yes, to promote religion. That's all it is to promote religion that is to bring most our children to strengthen participation of missions in the mission funded schools arabic islamic and instructors in the zongos yeah because they have nothing for you guys eh? go and read arabic then you come out with nothing and part of the northern ghana and eh, were paid allowances under the national volunteer service by kufuo look at this nonsense and he said these were discontinued by the NDC people. And so he said to restore allowance to Arabic Islamic instructors and additionally support Arabic Islamic instructors. Look at this. Look in this 21st century. Eh? So we have these stupid, dumb people who can't even reason. Look at the nonsense that they are writing here. Arabic, Arabic. Are we Arabic people? Look at this. This is nonsense. Eh? To teach our children mythical nonsense. To teach our children to impart them with myth. Look at this nonsense, yo. Is that to provide provide supporting facilities and, and revive sporting competition among schools. That is a fat big lie. And let's read here. Ensure that children with special needs and are, and are whenever possible integrated within regular schools. <laughs> improve the facility uh, improve the facilities and the curriculum for since they came they've not even in they've not asked it is for education at all level never eh. they've not even upgrade the curriculum they haven't do done so is that curriculum you see you guys are not even you see we should go through all this nonsense and charge mahamudi but i'm gonna come out I need this that that man for debate that Mahmoud I need him. Is that in collaboration with the private sector provide free Wi-Fi coverage for senior secondary and tertiary institutions nationwide dedicated to learning administration and oh that is a fat big lie. Let's go here. Is that the the book and research allowance for lecturers? It is a fat big lie. We will also abolish the payment of utility bills by student. He said, which, which students, when I was in school, I didn't pay utility bills. He said, we will also increase the amount of loans under the student loan scheme and restructure the, the, the streamline. It, that is a fit, fat big lie. 
reactivate the original aim of linking technical vocational institution to universities to enforce technical education and position them to the front front of NPP district. And these people, they are just criminals. They said, encourage the colleges of education to upgrade their curriculum. What kind of what kind of curriculum? They haven't been able to upgrade anything. Restore in full teacher training allowance. That is a fat big lie. That is a fat big lie here. Yeah, criminal people. Eh? Is that health? Is it health? So you see, these are all the highlights you and you can read. Eh? Is that the health system in the country is critical for the national development. The vision of the NPP is to see to that to to see that the right to health of the Ghanaians of all Ghanaians is guaranteed through an established health sector with sustainable ability to deliver affordable, equitable, and easily accessible accessible healthcare. And you will see to realize the vision, the NPP will expand health promotion programs, scale up um, um, scale up disease prevention strategies. That is a fat big lie. Oh, fact, we like I said, <clears throat> under the, the leadership of the president, J. Kofo, introduction, blah, 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 you can read all this. This is all nonsense. All nonsense. Build an academy and emergency center in Takura. <laughs> okay, let me let me read here what they're going to build. They said they're going to build something, something here. These people are fools who are straight to God. They are just fools. Eh? They are just food, I swear to God. Eh? He said they will build what? He said emphasis prevent. He said invest in the expansion and equipment and equipping of medical schools to train more medical doctors. Today, doctors are all jobless. They can't get anything to do in that country. More than 2,000 medical doctors are jobless in Ghana. He said restore training nurses allowance. That is a fat big lie. He said provide free specialized um, postgraduate training in our estab established eh, institutions. I think so. Postgraduate training institutions. That is that is a fat lie. Restore and streamline tax relief abolished by the NDC government, which facilitated the purchase of vehicles by healthcare workers. That is a fat lie. That is a fat big lie. Is that build? Uh, what kind of word is this? Build an accident and emergency center in Takurade is a fat lie. Upgrade all existing district hospitals where they exist and where they don't establish one. NPP aim that is a fat big lie. Eh? They said the district to have at least one hospital. Fat big lie. It said strengthen the flagship communities healthcare program programs. Programs in, in the areas of community participation, infrastructure and finance and quality service delivery by skilled health staff, supervision and monitoring and surveillance and disease control. Fat Big Lab. Work with the private sector to establish world-class research laboratory and within the um, responsive national laboratory systems. copy <laughs> internet as I improve the drug supply chain by expanding rapidly local production and ensuring quality affordable drugs are available is a fat lie. Work with the private sector to establish uh, trauma centers <coughs> within hospitals along the main highways is a fat big lie. Is that make accessible and affordable and a high quality and uh, the uh, continuum of care. And care a woman experience through fertility period, promote good nutrition, fat big lie. Uh, implement the comprehensive plan for safe disposal of biomedical, fat big lie. Incorporating traditional medicine in, is a fat big lie. In healthcare is a fat big lie. Improve efficiency to ensure limited resources are uh, a fat big lie. Recognize the inc uh, the increasing incidence of cancers. Today, more people are getting more cancers, especially liver cancer, kidney cancers, and blood cancers. A lot of Ghanaians are getting it. That is a fat big lie. And then they put vulnerable people's faces on the internet just to tell you that Ghanaians are suffering. Yeah, they just put their faces there to lie to you. Like that, and look at them. They just put it. Akufuadu will never put his children here. Eh? Then he put these people there to tell you that uh, Ghanaians are really suffering. 
Is that social development? <laughs> the NPP aims to create a social of fair opportunities for all Ghanaians, built on the far-reaching social interventions policies for Kufo-led government. That is a fat fucking lie. So the NPP, when it comes to the social, they will amend Disability Act to bring it into uh, uh, bring it into line with the UN Convention of Disability and pass appropriate legislation instrument for the implementation of Mental Health Act 2012, Act 846, and the Disability Act 2006 Act. This, you see, if you read my uh, my my research, you see all this act because I did the research on dis disabled people. So you see all this act in my research. If you go to my methodology. And, and if you go to, I think the, 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 the um, yeah, that, that is the methodology. You see all this act there. Yes, I captured all this act. So I'm familiar with this act here. And it's a lie. They've not done anything. That is a fit, fat, big lie. Okay, let's go here. And they said, um, and starve and properly resource the National Council on person with disability in partnership with a civil society organization decentralize it to the regional level and for sections 18 of the disability act that provides free education for the person with disability implement the three percent increase for the common fund disbursement nothing they don't disperse nothing to them it is a fat big lie here but uh, which remains an un implemented and ensure that the portion of the DACF meant for the person with disabilities are dispersed through the decentralized district and regional offices of the entity. That is a fat big lie. It is a fat big lie. It said, reinforce the LEAP program, which has become the blatant source of political patronage by among the teens adopting the effective accurate means testing to target identity and the enroll properly beneficiary household that is a fat big lie is that institute measures and eh? um institute measures to reduce administrative cost of the ghana school feeding programs to the um, barest minimum and stimulate the local agricultural growth by recurring and caterers by to buy and use full staff grown locally from the fa local farmer that is a fat big lie this criminal today they import food <laughs> it all is that mainstream aging issues into the national development frameworks and poverty eradication strategies by establishing farmers is that farmers including and ancillary farm hands in our major cash crops, agriculture sectors like cocoa, coffee, share nut, palm oil, pineapples, and cashew nut. And members of the small scale um, uh, business associations, including the umbrella, all this nonsense, this is a fat lie. Is that ensure the funds for national pensions? Oh, hey, <laughs> pensioners, where are you guys? We just want you guys to come and see something. Oh, in 2006, he said, Ensure that the funds for the National Pensions Regulatory, uh, Regulatory Authority are applied solely for the development of the pensioner industry. <laughs> Do they have a pensioner industry today? This guy eh, is seizing the pensioner fund. Is not allowing the pensioner fund because the IMO have told them to go back to your country and touch the pension money. And Akufuado has really touched the pensioners are crying every single day. And this is what they captured you. Eh? And these people are in power. God damn it. These people, eh? let's see here. Fully implement section 103 assignment for pension benefit for housing of workers for the of the National Pension Act 208 Act 760s. That is a fucking lie. Pay all outstanding contribution to the pension fund, including tie to contribution for public sector workers. That is a fucking lie. Today, pensioners are crying. Is that you use the appropriate information technology platform to this to decentralize and automate pension payment and establish decks in each district assembly for this purpose and that is a fucking fucking lie eh? is that provide the aged with the aged ones <coughs> with the freedom of path to enable them ride for free <laughs> these people are fools who look at this here 
Look, it's a provide the aid, the aid that with the freedom eh, to pass, eh, enable them to run for free all public transport. Please, the old age people, are you guys eh, the, taking the public transport for free? This is what they told you guys. And that take comprehensive review of SNIT investment and cost to ensure its financial sustainability. Today, Yasafo Mafo son is in charge of all this. <laughs> and the son and the family members. He said, yeah, he says uh, a point of women to at least 30% available. That is all political jargon. He said, certain aside 50% of mass lock fund for female applicants is a lie. Reducing career headquarters phenomenon. Look at this. Reducing career headquarters phenomenon by. So they're going to stop career problem. So let's look at it here. Improving the economy of their district. <laughs> How will the NPP solve um, career? And this is what they say they're going to solve Kaya issue. They said improve the economy of their district of origin to keep migration. So those of you coming from, uh, those of you who are doing Kaya please we are asking, have they done that in your area? They said they're going to improve the economies. How do you improve economy of a district? <laughs> and Mahmoud Ibamuya, I want your answer. Come here and tell Ghanaians. How do you improve the economy of a district? He said you're going to do that by stopping migration. He said those people migrate from their you know, district to large areas and they do kayaks. He said providing alternative life skills, training and seed capital. He said, look at this too. Seed capitals as well as parties partnering with private sectors. NGOs and charities to provide temporary hostel facilities. <laughs> that they will provide temporary hostel facilities for them. I said, as they will, you know, building companies in their respective district. Then the government will also provide temporary hostel facilities. They will sleep. And so when, once they finish with the district, then the company they return back to their district. Oh, these people, eh, these criminal people, I swear to God. Is that we will work with the district assemblies to exempt carriers from market tools and taxes currently imposed on them. <laughs> hey, this is what you for. Is that improving their access to education and health care? Look at this. And they've done the opposite. Introducing a district integra integrated social services program for children, families, and vulnerable uh, adults to consolidate the relevant health, education, and justice systems. Is that look at this? Oh, justice systems, <laughs> as well as social protection program. That is a fat fucking lie. These criminal people, eh, and this is another a subsection. Is a governance, corruption, and public accountability. <laughs> governance. Corruption and government accountability. Look at this here. He said, the fundamental requirement for sustainable development is good governance. The NPP is irrevocably uh, committed to the established establishment of solid, efficient machinery for good governance, comprising accountable government and respect for the rule of law and human rights. Human rights. Okay, he so said, the NPP will established by an act of parliament an office of special prosecutor okay now they've established it and he's doing nothing who will be an independent of execution look at this who and independent and this they copied this from the americans they went to the internet and copied it who will be an independent of the SK? hey any political party some of us are there some of us are very good though to write policies and to write manifestos. If they want some of us, they can come and pay us. Some of us are so good. All this nonsense, go to the internet, you can just capture this. So they went to the internet and they captured this from the United States people. He said, 
independent execution to investigate and prosecute certain cate uh, categories of cases and allegations of corruption and other criminal wrongdoings, including those involving alleged violations of the public procurement act and cases implicating political office holders and politicians. So this is just political jargons, okay? Just jargon, and then says, enhance and account accountability governance by promoting the effective separation of powers. <laughs> Educate provisions to secure the independence of the judiciary will be made and will help to strengthen the institutional capacity of parliament to solid, 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 um, solidify it. <laughs> this is just, they've copied all this from the internet. So this is five parliament oversight of the did they form oversight of the executive? That is a lie. He says require the president within 14 days forward a list of appointments made in pursuant of chapter 24 of the constitution to the auditor general that the auditor general publish to you. And this is what they wrote to you. the auditor general published periodically the list of all persons appointed under the chapter 24 of the constitution and amend the law relating to asset declaration to provide the sanctions which may include and uh, for future of appointment look at this they wrote this you they wrote this and today that is an opposite is that establish an automatic mechanisms to transfer of statutory funds to designated agencies such as the Ghana Education Trust Fund. <coughs> Today, <coughs> these are assemblies and uh, a health insurance. Amend the relevant sections of the Criminal Act. <laughs> then, this is the, and particularly section 3 of 151 and 239257 to make corruption a felony. <laughs> <laughs> to make corruption a felony rather than a misdemeanor. So that's what they wrote you. This is what they wrote here. Uh, oh. And then let's read again. It said reform laws to set time limits within which an appointment authority must fill and a vacancy or conf uh, confirm a person. <laughs> Acting the office where the institutions has watchdog rules. Eh? To ensure the passage of right to information. And now you ask them, please, how much has Akufuadu spent on private debt? Then they are keeping it. They don't want that information to come out. You just want certain information. They say, no, it shouldn't come out. But they said they've passed the right to information bill. It means if you are a Ghanaian, you have every right to question them. You just, I want to know. The information about this how how have you guys been spending our money on you ever want to ask they'll kill you is it ensure the, the strict enforcement of the public procurement act 203 act 663 is it ensure the transparency by establishing a transaction price database which will be periodically reviewed to conform to make trends that is a fucking fat lie is that bring to an end the prevailing regime of impunity? <laughs> bring to an end the prevailing regime of impunity where people, is that where people found to have stolen or fraudulently benefited from public funds, eh? public funds are merely requested by the attorney, attorney general to refund some of their own terms or are shattered at the office of president and also ensure the implementation of the recommendation of the auditor general <laughs> the auditor general have put out several recommendations and this idiots have not done so as a general and account of parliament as a sponsor let's read here sponsor the establishment of the interactive website for the public reporting of corrupt practices in accordance with the whistleblowers act <laughs> these people are very fools i swear to god he said look at them oh, sponsor the establishment of an interactive website for the public reporting of corrupt practices in accordance with the whistleblowers act today see something say it you just see something you just say it then they'll come and kill you but look at what they put it out there. 
Hey, these people, I swear to God, they just put people, so people were demonstrating, right? So people were demonstrating in 2016, and look at that, people carrying lanterns, and Muhammad allowed them, and so they put it out there, so you see people are struggling, people demonstrating, just put it out there, okay? And then there's a local government, all right? They said the NPP is committed to bringing governance to the doorsteps of the people. We will focus on the effective and efficient decentralization through greater grassroots participation, better planning, and improved service delivery in local communities. The NPP will, the NPP will oversee the direct elections of metropolitan municipal district chief executive within 24 months of election. That is a fucking fat lie. Strengthen the substructures of the MMDEs and through capacity building and adequate resource allocations. Fat lie. Strengthen the role of traditional authority within editor. Today, a traditional authority will come out and point out a wrong to you. Then they will go and attack the traditional authority and insult his tribal people. That's just what these people are doing. Yes. Is that improve allowance paid to assembly members? Which allowance? <laughs> Upgrade the Tamil campus of the, the Institute of Local Government Service into a modern state of art institute. Tamil people, where are you? Local people government partitioned in the south of northern Ghana. That is a fucking fat lie. Okay? Is that abolish the current practices of central government manipulation of the DACF through the uh, procurement process is a fucking lie. They are doing the same thing. Is that decentralizing and equipping the land valuation board to provide direct technical support on property valuation to MMDAs for enhanced revenue, revenue mobilization. That is a fucking lie. Fucking lie. Is that ensuring the speedy enactment of the municipal finance bill initiated by Kufo led NPP administration into law. The law will provide space to MMDEs to assess and funds from capital market from the uh, for rapid socio-economic development and partner to provide sector to provide jobs open is that the fucking line. <laughs> Ensure the consolidation of all existing national sanitation policies and plans and programs into the comprehensive national sanitation program and action plan and establish a national sanitation fund as a fucking fat lie and they put something here look at these criminal people okay this is this is their manifesto 2016 and there's a security this year alone man today somebody has today i even saw in the news today in the asante region a man has murdered the wife today butchered her into pieces today just today this year alone Men have murdered over 200 women. We want to talk about security here. Let's talk about it. Is that the NPP government will secure peace and security for all Ghanaians? Under the NPP, Ghanaians will feel safe on the street. <laughs> Look at this. I said. Look at this here. Under the NPP government, Ghanaians will feel safe on the street and in their homes. Ghanaians will go about their daily business and secure knowledge eh? um, that their pensions, that, that, that their persons, properties and lives are safe under the NPP government. They go to the street, they want to even kill you. People are demonstrating they are killing them. They're not giving, giving them the opportunity to do that. And this is what they told you guys that they would do. And they are doing an opposite. They said the NPP will ensure that our security personnel are adequately prepared to deal with the emerging threat of terrorism and cyber, uh, cyber crime, which will, another, which will be another major priority of our government. It is a lie. They said the government, the our government will end, you know, we will as part of our overall commitment to improving the life conditions of our security personnel, the NPP will roll out national barracks and eh, regeneration programs that will invest in rehabilitating and upgrading the lives, the, the their living quarters across the country. It is a fucking life. You go to various pol uh, police and military barracks, 
go and see how depilated those buildings are. These sleep in, you know, wretched buildings. They haven't done anything to them. As a review and restructure recruitment into our police police service to stamp out the fraud and cronyism that have been introduced into the process by the Mahama. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all this when we are English, you we are true. We need a beating crop for as I continue to recruit additional personnel with the increased uh, recruitment of women. You see, you see, I'm gonna say, uh, on the sincerity and in some uh, you can young for feel it These people service work towards the ratio of one to five thousand police. Service. That's a fucking lie. Provide the police with modern communication and police equipment. Fucking lie. Build two new police headquarters. Police host look. Build two new police head host uh, police hospitals at Sunyani and Bolegatanga to serve the health needs of the police personnel. Uh, people from Bolegatanga and Sunyani, please have they built that thing for you guys. Build two new police training schools. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said, that harmonized and standardized police training across the country and improve the resource in the resource and improve and resource all police training institutions, including the command college at Winneba. Complete the third phase of the 37 military hospital project as well as upgrade it equipment to meet modern medical challenges having constructed the second phase okay i said construct a new military hospital in tamale to serve the health needs of the military personnel and their families in the northern sector of the country <laughs> continue the local foreign training for armed forces personnel <laughs> Very good for a look at this here. I said, <clears throat> commit to adjusting up upwards the allowance in line with increase by the UN. Ensure the personnel who serve a US peacekeeping uh, peacekeeping missions are paid at their duty post. <laughs> Take immediate steps to decongest our prisons to you. Until. Take immediate steps to decongest our pensions, our prisons, and introduce a system to separate um, uh, to separate remand and convicted inmates, reform pre-trial detentions, prison uh, management, sentencing, including non-custodial sentences, social integration, and health facilities for prisoners, pension officers, and civilian employee, em employees. <laughs> Offering competitive Remuneration to enable service, uh, service, um, uh, uh, enable their service attract the best personnel. <laughs> Building uh, two prison service hospitals, each one in the southern and the northern sectors of Ghana. Provide each district with fire service station where none exist. Where there is one, the NBP will upgrade it to require it. Uh, uh, to to require to meet the minimum standardized please i'm reading from the internet that is why uh, it is i'm reading it the way i'm reading now uh, and to see minimum standardized expected of a modern well equipped fire station service <laughs> offering competitive remuneration and able of my kind we see i see recognize and the recognition of the multiple rules and also as part of the NPP aim to grow rapid tourism, these people the criminal. It's a foreign affairs. So we can read all this. And this is what they promised you guys in 2016. Today they are delivering hell to you guys. And they are there, plenty of them. You can read a lot of them. You can just read it. A lot of them. That is what they promised you guys. You know, and that was desperation. I want to be in power at all costs. Let me be in power. If this dude is not doing anything, let us, let kick, kick him out of power. And let us bring all this to convince Ghanaians. And look at how these people, 
you know, um, um, told you guys that this manifesto would change Ghana in less than 18 months. And today, nothing is happening. Poverty everywhere. Uh, people, everybody, you know, crying. People are suffering. And you see, they've forgotten that they promised Ghanaians in 2016 to deliver Ghanaians from problems, pains. And look at what they are delivering. I have a question for Mahmoud Ibamwa. What is his purpose of actually contesting to become a president? You are the second deputy president. You are the deputy president, Mahmoud Ibamwa. You are the deputy president. If you have something good to offer, you should have, uh, you know, given it to Akufuado. You should have supported Akufuado to help Ghana. You are a vice president, you. And because you are a vice president, you think Ghanaians will just have to vote for you to break the eight. And this term, breaking the eight, do you guys actually understand the word break? Breaking something means you are destroying. They've already destroyed the country, so they are looking forward to break the nation into pieces. And that's the meaning of break the eight. They will break the nation into eight pieces. They have nothing to offer. You know, and they have not, they, they will, they will, they won't have a single campaign promise to tell Ghanaians. They exhausted all the campaign, you know, uh, uh, promises. And they have not been able to fulfill them. So what would they tell Ghanaians? Yeah, they're going to break eight. You're going to break which eight? You're going to destroy the, you have already destroyed the country. And you have it as a slogan, breaking the eight. And what we are doing is about breaking the, you have already destroyed. So you want to break the, the country into eight pieces, right? Mahmoud Ibamwa, you are deputy president. And look at what you and Akufado have done to the country. You have eventually collapsed Ghana. Under your auspices, Ghana is the most indebted nation in Africa. Under your leadership, Mahmoud Ibamwa, you and Akufado, Ghana is now an essentially bankrupt nation. And yet, you still want to be a president. Mahmoud Ibamwa, you think we are fools, right? What at all do we even have? Is a, What is special about this guy? When they marketed him to us in 2008 and 2016, they presented this guy to us as a superhuman being. That is an economic messiah that he will be able to change Ghana. Mahmoud Ibam, I have this simple question for you. What is your aim of becoming a president? Do you have a separate aim from your aim? Right now, you are just the, 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 the vice president of the country. And you haven't helped Agufuado in any way. But that Agufuado is a super incompetent guy, and you too, you are also a super incompetent guy. You're telling Ghanaians, we're going to break the eight. You want to break Ghana into eight separate pieces. That is, all, that is English language, you. What is the meaning of the word breaking? To break something is to destroy. You are breaking. Breaking a stick. Breaking a tree. Breaking a plastic. Breaking. A, break. To break here means to destroy. So now it is a slogan and a jargon. They want to break the eight. And you guys too, uh, uh, he has never, they've not, not him. I've read most of all, almost all their so-called campaign manifesto in 2016. Can you please tell me which of the campaign uh, 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 manifesto that they've, they've fulfilled? None of them. And today they're telling you, today they are looking for money to do something. They can't even get it. They have overborrowed. They have overborrowed. And now they don't have anything to um, um, to help Ghanaians. And they want to still break the eight. And they have exhausted all the gendarmes. Oh, that is true. And Ghanaians will be buying white with a, a QR scan, a, a, a scan code. Oh, yes, that guy is just a joke. You see, you can just go to the internet and copy, copy, copy things and tell us that those things are policies and they are and they, 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 they will help Ghanaians. We can all do that, you. Me, I can bring nice policy. If I read it, you clap your hands for me. But how do you, you know, fulfill or implement those policies? 
You can't just put it out that we will do this and you haven't done that. It's just, you are just, we will ensure. You will ensure in what way? We will ensure that we eradicate corruption. How do you eradicate corruption? You eradicate corruption by arresting your own appointees, corrupt appointees. You will, you will eradicate corruption. If the president is corrupt, he must resign or he must be impeached. And that is the action that we need. It is not about you putting it on paper and you reading it to Ghanaians. And then Ghanaians, oh, it's a good thing. This is just a common English language, you. And you read through that common English language. You clap your hands. They are doing very well. No, no, it is just a mere English common language. Simple as ABC. A mere English common language. And they use that to de de deceive Ghanaians. We will do this. We will ensure that. We will that. We will construct it. And they know it is, it is never true. They don't have that capacity to do anything. You are a country. Just look at the numerous promises. A third world country that for you to come out to tell Ghanaian that this is what you do with what money. You are a poverty stricken nation. You depend on not uh, raw resources. And depending even on the raw resources, you only get 2% out of your natural resources. You don't get anything. You don't get anything. You depend on your Ghanaians living outside. You depend on them. Because if you go to the port, look, when I started reading, they said they will cancel VAT. They will cancel this. Today, have they canceled VAT? They will cancel corporate taxes. He has introduced over 20 something different taxes. So what they promise you, they are delivering the opposite. If I come into power, I will cancel tax. Ghanaians won't pay tax. They said, go to the port, import duty tax, you will cancel it. And today, he has introduced over 20 something taxes. That's what they promised you in 2016. And you don't have the right to ask them. Mahmoud Ibama should come and tell us. Why did you promise Ghanaians to cancel taxes and you are doing the opposite? It should come out. Because he asked Mr. Atta 170 questions. That Mr. Atta should answer him. 170 questions. Mahmoud Ibama, I just want you to come out to answer Ghanaians. They lied to Ghanaians. And that was a, because I want to be in power. I have to lie. I have to be in power at all costs. I've seen these people chopping money, uh, getting money, getting contract. I'm not getting. So I envy uh, the president. Let me say, uh, let me lie to Ghanaians to also get elected. That's what they did. Because what they promised, they know that they can't do it. Where is the money to do that? Where is the money to implement? Well, build hospitals with what money? With what money? You go to the uh, international market to borrow money to pay workers. Ghana. Ghana use borrowed money to pay workers. You don't even generate enough money to, 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 to help yourself. You have to go to the market, borrow money, and use that money to pay teachers, uh, nurses, doctors. You pay your workers. And you'll be promising this kind of huge and, and you know, promises. They made these huge promises. And you are not charging and asking them. We'll do this in the north. We'll do this in the middle bed. We'll do this in the here. That was a lie. And that was a deception. You must challenge them. Challenge them. Breaking it about what, what is special about what they've done. They've done nothing. We're going to break it at all costs. Uh, really? And they said they will fight corruption. <laughs> they will fight corruption. They will make sure that everything becomes transparent. Today, you want to know what transpired, eh? what is transpiring at the Jubilee House, and they will use police and people to come after you and kill you. They don't want anybody to speak. And that was what they did. So if you want to say something about it, please, you can just go through this 2016 manifesto and you can ask them simple questions. Just read through and you know that these people are useless people. They are very useless people. And teachers are suffering, nurses are suffering, workers are suffering, men are suffering, women are suffering. And that was a campaign slogan. And it was a, a policy. 
They promised you guys that they will introduce a lot of development industries so that people will get jobs. That women won't suffer anymore. Children won't suffer anymore. That they will make sure they 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 they, they, they get away this no bed syndrome at hospitals. Eh? That's what they told you guys. And today they are not doing anything. They are rather giving you hell. Hell is what they are delivering to you Ghanaians. You guys don't want to ask them simple questions. But me, I am here to ask them simple questions. I know they have nothing to tell Ghanaians. Next year, they won't tell Ghanaians anything. They've exhausted everything. And they are uh, justifying the police brutality on the protested. They said JME did the same. They are very foolish people, I swear to God. These people, you see, politics here yeah, is not a good thing, I swear to God. African politics is not a good thing. Because they are not using... Um, um, the politics eh, to do the right thing. That's what because it is all about money. All the noise, the noise that they made. It is all about position, all about power, all about money. Talking about agriculture, do you don't even know what it is in agriculture? Eh, from you, you Akufado to your uh, uh, for, to the last person assemblyman. Do you guys even know anything about agriculture? Hey, when we talk about agriculture technology, and that is the modern trend to develop a nation, he doesn't know anything about it. You just go and put that. We will ensure that the agriculture production increase. We will we'll provide a seeded fund eh, to make sure that a research. It is a fat big lie. They don't know what they're talking. They say they will establish research centers across Ghana. To facilitate development and technology and invention. Talking about innovation and that invention. Have they done that? Hell no. They don't know what they were talking about. Too. You just have to go to the internet, copy certain things, then re um, orient it, put it there as a campaign policy. That's it. Then you you read through and you think, oh, oh, this is a good thing. They have a good thing. They, don't, they have nothing for Ghanaians. Eh? They have nothing for Ghanaians. He called this a policy, a campaign manifesto, and it contains policies. Read through. These, these are not policies. They, they, they don't even know how to go about them. What they wrote eh, in 2016. And today, they've messed up big time. They've messed up everything. They've messed up agriculture. They've messed, they've messed up education. They've missed a uh, health sector. They've missed everything. Afro finance there. That is why we are the worst, you know, performing currency in Africa. The most indebted nation in Africa. The most corrupt nation in Africa. A good father. You've seen what you've cost. But you made much noise. You said your aim is to help Ghana to become the blah, blah, blah. To, uh, to save Ghana from incompetence. And today you are in power. Look at what you are, you are causing. We want to break it. Are you gonna break it for us to see? And Ghanaians are waiting for you to break that eight. And they have the men, no, not knowing that they are they are all pregnant with second as ah. They don't have any men. It was just a political jargon. Mahmoudi Bamwa, so are you a man? Mahmoudi Bamwa. When we say men, do you consider yourself as a man? And he was using education, book knowledge. You, Mahmoudi Bama, what kind of particles? He hasn't even passed through any particles before. That guy, I'm telling you. It's just book, 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 book. And he was quoting books. When he read from books and he quote, and with this, with looking at the trajectory, the, the trajectory and looking at the profile, it's like the economy is going down spiral and we have to do something about it to increase it tremendously. If your fundamentals are weak, the city, the, 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 the exchange rate will that is just a book terms. When he was saying, if the fundamentals are weak, the Eastern rate will expose you. Today, what is the Eastern rate? He said that when the Eastern rate was 1 to 3.9, 1 to 3.9, today it is 1 to 11. It was 1 to 16 last year. Yes, 1 to 16. That's the dollar. And today, what, so what fundamentals was he even talking about? Mahmoud Ibamwa. You said if the fundamentals are weak, what kind of fundamentals was he even talking about? Today, you are the second president. 
you are the deputy president. Ghanaians expect you to deliver for them. You are not doing that, and today, under your own auspices, Ghana is in debt, the most indebted nation in Africa. And Ghana economy is now bankrupt. And this dude still wants to become a president, telling us that he has the brain. We, you, we know what is in you. You are nothing. You don't have any power. You are just empty. Nothing is in his head. You know, when they lie to you and tell you, I've gone to school and I am educated. I want to, he was using, he's an Oxford, a trained student and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, 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 and he can deliver. An Oxford trained student has messed up Ghana and not doing anything for Ghana. You think it is about education, right? It is about how you are able to apply your brain. And they even said something about critical thinking. They said they will help Ghanaians who uh, 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 they will help Ghanaians who have critical thinking abilities to help Ghana. Today we have that critical thinking ability, and when we come out to say something, then they sponsor people to come under our videos to insult us. And critical thinking ability was captured as a policy in their manifesto in 2016. That critical thinking people. And today we have critical thinking people like us. We will go into the, uh, uh, through the manifesto, tell them, you promised this, you said this, you did this, blah, blah, blah. Today you've not done that. And that is the critical thinking. Mahmoud Ibrahim, we are nothing special about you. We have weighed you and now we know you are empty. Nothing is in you. You are just an empty guy. That is why you were making noise. Empty barrels make the most make noise. That guy was just making noise. He is just empty. If he's not empty, the economy wouldn't be like this. If he's not empty, he would have used his brain to save Ghana from the mess. Because it's empty, that is why we're going through challenges. Because it's empty, that is why Ghanaians cannot feed to cannot get food to eat. Because it's empty, that's why Ghanaians are not getting anything. An empty-headed guy who is a vice president, always lying, using I mean Bamud Bamwa, you're not the only educated person in Ghana. So many people are educated. Don't we have economic lecturers in various universities? Go to all the universities in Ghana. They have a lot of economic professors. You are not even a professor. They have a lot of economic professors. Mahmoud Ibamiya, you are not the only one with a PhD title in economics. Thousands of Ghanaians are holding PhD in economics. But you lie to Ghanaians that you are the competent, you are the most knowledgeable, that they should give you the note. Today you are in power. Look at what you are doing. And he explained to Ghanaians why they are going to the IMF. For them, they, they have to explain. But when NDC was going to the IMF, something was wrong. To the extent that Gabi Ochidakun came out and insulted Mahama that he, he was stupid. That if you go to the IMF, it means you are a criminal. That's what he said. I even played the tape to you the other day. Yes. And today, look at the mess you guys have created. You going to the IMF and the special conditionalities. Eh? That conditionality as an attachment. That go to your country, do this, do, don't do this, don't do that, don't employ. And you have to announce it. They announce it that they are saying that we shouldn't employ people. Oh. You don't even have the means. But you promise Ghanaians that you're going to help Ghanaians, liberate them from suffering. Now people are still suffering. Women are suffering. You said you help women. Men are suffering. People are suffering in that country. You see what you've done? You've done nothing and you are just empty. You're just making noise. And now this is his slogan. It is possible. <laughs> it is possible. It is possible. Are you not the vice president? Are you not the vice president? That it is possible to become president. That it is possible. What, what kind of nonsense is this? And he goes around bragging himself that he should choose him, blah, blah, blah. You have nothing to tell Ghanaians. And you have nothing to justify. You have nothing to, to, to defend. You are just a mess. You have created a mess. And today, we are here reading to you, telling you, and that's what it is. A mess of a vice president. Lying to yourself that you are a knowledgeable person. 
that the Ghanaians have to vote for you. And that's all it is. I <clears throat> that's all it is. I am telling you, Mahmoud Ibamwa, it is possible. It is possible to become a president. So you are only interested in becoming a president. And your vision is to become a president, nothing else. He doesn't have anything. He does not have anything to deliver. He doesn't have anything to tell Ghanaians. And he is telling you that it is possible for him to become a president. And because they, oh, it is possible he can become president. So becoming a president is of much interest to him than having the good mindset of helping Ghana. If you have something positive, you should have used that positivity to help Akufuado and to help Ghanaians. But today you are not doing that. And that's all it is. That is all it is. Our eyes are being opened now. Sooner than later, we'll start beating. Oh, they have to beat the hell out of them. You have to lie, tell lies, and for you to gain power. I'll do this, I'll do that. Oh, man. That's, that's nonsense. So they lied, and they can't do anything. They lied to you. Nothing that they can do. When he was saying that he had to they had come to you. That's the kind of thing. Not the Kabu baby, who can't throw cancer the bay about to Abamano. And to a monk yet is a castle, yet is a castle, and Sikaoha, the Kabian babya. Answer the Manimogua, the Akufa, the only baby, and Manimogua to do so. Ah, you don't have anything to offer Ghanaians. I was young, my Cassache, my mum from Siati, to the Ampon and Camuninaho. I was about to ask you, and meaning Yahua, and Messiaba, and Yahuzua, and the Disorchina. I'm the mum from Sia, the vet was on the moon, I said, Mamma, joining me now. I tell you, trade down from coming in our home. Bye bye.